Hi, this is Rose of 59 here. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make these vinyl record bowls. And don't forget, you can download these free plans for the flower one and also for the Taylor Swift ones. Enjoy the video! To make your vinyl bowl record, what you're going to need is a bowl, a glass bowl. I am just using, I think it's 8.5 to 9 inch bowl uh, you can use. And then you need a vinyl record. Just any old one, just make sure though it's not a one that has any value to because uh, that would be a total bummer when you go ahead and make this into a bowl and it's worth a lot of money. So make sure it's an old one. I just went to Value Village and picked one up for two bucks. And just need a can, just for any can that has a little bit of weight to it, just so we can get it to the shape that we need. And I am using a heat gun. And the reason for a heat gun, I found that it was a lot more easier to control, to shape it to any shape that I want, uh, versus using it in the oven. Uh, in the oven, I did experiment. I personally didn't like it. It didn't turn out too much the way I wanted to. And it did have a little bit of smell, and I kind of was worried if I was cooking, if any of that uh, smell would go into my food. So I found a heat gun was more useful and it was kind of cooler because I was able to mold it and shape it and play with it a little bit more than if I could in an oven. So I just got my can here on top and I'm going to start the heat gun. I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do because the heat gun is a little bit noisy so you might not hear me while it's on. I'm going to have it on the high heat and when I turn it on you want to keep a nice movement going. Uh, the reason for that is if you have it in in one area and it's too hot then it might tend to burn it uh, or start to melt it because uh, this is a heat gun. So you do want to keep it kind of moving in consistency and you'll kind of know when this will start to suck down into the bowl a little bit because of the weight and then you'll know uh, you're at that stage where you can move it. Now what I did was I took it out of the bowl because it was starting to crush it just a little too much. And now that I got it at a certain heat, I just took a glass and I'm just holding it in position just to kind of get the shape of a flower here. And the neat thing about this is if you're not happy the way when it sets, just use the heat gun again and just heat it up and then keep playing with it and molding it till you're happy with it. You have to hold it a bit just so it gets nice and hard and also make sure that you are on a flat surface or so because if you are not so flat here at the bottom then if you do use it as a bowl it might like tip or so so you want to be careful of that and once you're happy with your look you'll have something that looks like this I'm going to take it to the next level you certainly could leave it like this and put it on a table and enjoy it and put your knickknacks in but I am going to paint this and add inside decoration like an actual flower. Prime this first with one coat of my bare uh, stain blocking primer and sealer. This is just what I have left over so I'm just trying to use up everything that I have. And I'm going to go ahead and put one coat on and then let it dry for about an hour and then I'm going to go ahead and then put my actual color on. And I'm just going to paint just the inside only. I am not going to paint the outside so I just want to prime just the inside. Once the primer's dry I went ahead and I painted the inside orange and did a couple of coats of that and then on the outside I just did some design with this type of a brush. It's just a cheap really inexpensive brush um, so the brush holes kind of like go all over the place but for this technique it works great and you just need a small amount of white paint. I just dipped a little bit in and then on a paper towel just rubbed off the excess and then just lightly went around and just went ahead and dabbed it all the way around and it gave me this really cool effect. 
For the center of the flower, you want to go ahead and print off your template, which I have provided for you to download for free. And you want to cut into two sections. Once you've cut it in two sections, you just want to tape your template down. And then I am just going to go ahead and use Alex Plus, which is a water-based silicone caulking that you use for your baseboards. But I am not using it for my baseboards. Obviously, I'm using it for this project. I have used this stuff in the past and it works really well. It's paintable, it's water-based, so it doesn't matter if you get in your hands. I find it's really hard to squeeze out of the tube. So what I've done is I've cut a bigger hole for it out and then I just grabbed a bag and put it into a bag and cut just a small hole. So once I've got about two rows, I like to do at a time. Then I take the bag and just do a little bit on top of your layer just so it kind of goes in between them so it almost looks like it fills in the gaps. And once it kind of fills in the gaps a little bit, then I like to take this tool that I have or an all you can use or a toothpick if you didn't have anything like this tool. And I kind of just dab it just a little bit just so it joins in together so it just looks like not one but maybe just kind of fills in the gaps or so or two. Just a quick tip I thought I would share with you guys. After it dried for about an hour and a half, I went back with a brush cleaning tool. Uh, just helps clean your brush when you get paint on it. But I used this to kind of go back in and out when it was still soft. And I was able to pick up some of these really fine holes because inside of a flower it has tiny, tiny holes all over the place. As I was looking on the internet, I saw that and this was just giving me that really nice technique. So I just kind of went one way like this, then I went like another way just randomly just to get all these different holes. For the centerpiece, I cut it out first once everything was all dry. Then I put some tape on the back here and I just put it down on a piece of paper. And then for painting it, I just used the same orange paint that I did for the flower. And I used this brush first to get on the yellow first and then I added in the orange because some areas are a little bit thicker. Then I went back and I used this type of a brush just to go dab everything all in on the inside and then blend everything in. And just in case if some of the paint goes in a little thicker spots, sometimes it, get, it got rid of some of the smaller holes that I did with the detail. So then I just went back and I just did the same thing all over again. To attach the centerpiece to the vinyl record, I just used some wood glue. I used Well Bond wood glue. And what I did was I put it on the back of the centerpiece first and then put it on top of the vinyl record where I wanted it to be. And then I took some wax paper and then some rocks I put on top I just bought from the dollar store and just put it on top for a weight and let that sat for about an hour and a half or two hours just so it got a nice bond. For the inside, I added three clear coats uh, just to give it a little bit more protection and durability. And for the ladybug that I included in there, I made it out of epoxy putty. This is a type that I used. And I found it worked really well because I could mold it into shape and then within 10 minutes, almost 15 minutes, not even, it was already hard as a rock. So I could go ahead and sand it and shape it, paint it, glue it on with crazy glue, and that was my flower. And it's pretty much all complete. And at the back, what I did was, because obviously with the record, the front and the back has the name, I just cut out the other template that was white out of paper that I printed off and then I just painted it black and then I just added a clear coat on top of it just to give it a little protection just so if it's sitting at the bottom or anything like that, if you get scratched or anything like that, it has a little bit more durability. Here are the other two vinyl bowls that I made. Instead of painting them, what I did was I used Sharpie permanent marker metallics and I found that worked great. They did bleed a little bit but not too much. And what I did was did the design first. After the design that I did, then I went ahead and heated everything up and melt them into the shape that I wanted them to be. And after it was all done, then I added for this one, because it's the Welcome to New York song, so I thought it'd be kind of cool doing a New York theme, adding in this glow-in-the-dark fabric paint that you can buy for t-shirts. Just put that all around so at nighttime when it gets a little bit sunlight, 
it will glow in the dark. For this one, I did the shake it off theme and I just did some heart shapes in the metallic Sharpie markers. And then in the inside, did the same thing as this one, did three clear coats on the inside and then on the back did the exact same picture on the back as well. And thanks for watching.